Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me today, and I have something I want to share with you that is so much fun, and I'm sure you've probably seen it a time or two, but I've got a little twist at the end. Um, today I'm going to be using Yupo paper along with Gina Kay's silver, let's see, what is this one? The Sparkling Silver Fancy Foil. Uh, it's really sparkly. It looks like glitter without the mess. Um, then I have some blending solution, and then I have the alcohol inks and turquoise, pool, mermaid, and aqua. So we're going to get started, and then I have a little twist at the end that I can't wait to show you. So we're going to grab the pool. You can use any inks. You can use two colors, probably just one color. I don't know. Um, but I was doing this the other day, and I had so much fun, I couldn't hardly stop. And then I posted a few of the panels in our Facebook group over on uh, Gina K Designs Friends and Stamp TV group. We're going to add these colors around. And I asked people what their favorite ones were. I had a red, a blue, a green, and a brown. And everybody gave their opinion. And I'm so thankful for that. So you just drop the colors wherever. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. This is just the way I did it. And I had a lot of fun. Um, I believe I was told that you get really good results from where the blending solution pools with the ink. So... You can blow this, you can pick it up and move it around. If you blow it, it kind of blends it. You can let it run. I'm going to leave it like that. It's got a nice little marble look to it. So what you do is you let it dry, but the trick is it can't dry all the way. You will notice when it starts drying, the background will get a little, it's real shiny like water right now. But as it dries, it kind of gets a little less shiny, uh, kind of matte looking maybe, but not totally. I'll see if I can point it out to you when it does it. It starts taking on a almost like a little textured effect. Let's try a little more blending solution. I, I'm kind of still new at this, and I believe it's where the blending solution in this is that it's really going to grab the foil. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. To me, it's like um, a science experiment. So we'll see what happens. And blow it again. Just because I want to move some of the color. And you can use a straw. I don't have one handy. As you can see here, this is dry. And it's not very tacky. You want the tack. Uh, and that's what's going to make your foil stick to the veining part or the puddles or whatever you want to call it. If it dries too much, it won't stick. So I see an area here that looks pretty dry. I hope it's not over dry. Let's see what happens. Oh, good. It picked up some right there. Yeah, this was too dry. So... This look like it looks like it's starting to get sticky. That part looks a little wet still, but let's give it a shot. All that can happen is it not work, but it'll still be a beautiful background, even if it don't pick up the foil, you know. Okay, so I did get a little foiling. As you can see, the ink wasn't dry and it stuck to the foil. But I do have a little bit of sparkle from the foil there. I'm gonna turn it. Try to grab some of this. See if it'll do. There we go. And had I not went back and added more blending solution, it would have probably dried more equally all over. Because you really want it to all do at the same time and not have to wait on it. So I picked up a little more foil there. I like this one because it's really soft and subtle and along the edges, which gives me a great area to show you the next step that I want to do. 
and I found it completely by accident. I was um, doing this the other day, and I wanted to, um, I had done some browns, and I wanted to add the chocolate truffle amalgam ink. I thought, okay, I can add amalgam ink on top. It's water resistant. You can do alcohol markers with it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, I put it down. Oh, see, perfect. Right amount. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this back down and give it one last swipe to see if I missed anything. Anyway, so um, I stamped my greeting with my amalgam ink, and when I put it down and lifted the lid of my Misty, I noticed the greeting, the ink was kind of pooled in the middle and on the edges, and I thought, hmm, something not quite right. Oh, yeah, see, look, it grabbed a little more. Great. All right. So we'll set that aside for a second. Um, I digress. So then I wiped off my greeting with the paper towel that it don't have much lint. So I wiped it off and I stamped again to pick up that ink. I thought, oh my gosh, I run it. So I started picking up the ink. Well, then I was doing ink lifting. Didn't even know that amalgam ink would do that. So I was really excited. And let me show you, here is a green one that I did and I stamped hugs and added some leaves. And I'll show you the other cards after we do this one. I wanna show you how I did it. So let me grab my Misty. And the backgrounds that I made the cards on that I'll show you, those backgrounds had been sitting in my craft room for about three or four, about three days, I guess, before I decided to make cards out of them. And that's when I discovered I could do ink lifting with amalgam ink. I had no idea. I don't own any ink lifting ink. So that was really a fun thing to discover. Okay, so I'm going to grab the new uh, Elegant Aster stamp set. And I'm going to do the You Are a Gift to Me. Okay, so I'm going to ink up my amalgam ink I'm just using whisper you can use any of them the first one I did was the chocolate truffle and it still came up I should have done it several more times so it'd come up better but I didn't all right so I have a paper towel I'm gonna blot off my stamp I'm gonna stamp back and you see how it's lifting the ink Now, if it gets too sticky and it's not lifting any more ink, you can go back and re-ink it. Be sure and wipe off your stamp, though. Otherwise, you're going to get that ink on your amalgam pad. You did that, too. <laughs> I'm just let it sit there for a minute. It'll melt that ink. and you just want it to pick up the ink. And you can do it as many times as you want until you get the look you're after. I'm gonna do it one more time to see if I can get a little more of that ink up. So I'm just putting it down, pressing, and then wiping off my stamp. And I don't want to wipe it off with uh, my tidy towel just yet because I don't want the moisture um, going back on here. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to take my tidy towel and clean up my stamp. And then you can cut this out to fit your card. And then cut out a little bit for the inside. And let me show you the cards that I have made um, with this technique. I hope you can see that. That is really pretty. You see all that sparkle and shine? And it's just enough. It's not too much. It's a nice little bit. And here's the cards I made. 
So this was the first one I did. This is when I discovered that I was ink lifting. Um, and I was using the chocolate truffle amalgam ink. And you can see it's still come out light because it's lifting the ink. And that's the brown and blue, uh, brown alcohol inks with the blue foil. Here is a blue alcohol ink with the silver, sparkling silver. And then here's a green one with the green, grass green foil. And then another blue one. So these are so much fun to make. Um, you can spend little while making backgrounds and just put them up and then when you get ready grab them and you can do your ink lifting or make cards or whatever you want to do anyway so thank you so much for joining me today i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed getting a chance to see that you can use your amalgam inks for ink lifting i hope you have a good day thank you for visiting please subscribe to my channel and you can find me over on instagram under karen hightower you can find me on Facebook in the Gina K. Designs Friends and Stamp TV group. Thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.